The Shoemaker and the Little People. Once in a faraway kingdom called Denver, there once lived an old shoemaker and his wife. They had very little money because the shoemaker would spend all his wages on booze, and what was left his wife would spend on cigarettes. So one day all the shoemaker had to his name was a single piece of plastic and a few other materials, enough only for one pair of stripper heels. That evening he got all the, the supplies together for the next morning when he was on the clock. Being a complete drunk, he quietly slipped out to the nearest bar and drank himself to sleep. The next morning, the shoemaker stumbled back to his shop to get started on the shoes. Realizing that the door was already open, the shoemaker reached for the nearest weapon he could find and peered into the shop. He was astounded to see that in place of the materials he had left out the previous night were two gleaming pink heels. He quickly reached out to inspect the shoes and saw that they were perfectly made, not even a tiny scuff mark could be seen. So he set them on his desk and started to think of a price. $120 would be a good price, he exclaimed. As the day progressed, a single mom walked into the shoemaker's shop. The second she saw the heels laid out on the shoemaker's desk, she let out a cry of delight. Oh, these would be just perfect for my job at the strip club next door, she exclaimed. Seeing the look of joy on the woman's face, the shoemaker upped the price to $579. The woman gave him a huge wad of singles and left the shop with the shoes. The shoemaker took the money and bought material enough to make exactly two pairs of cheap Nike knockoffs he called Night E. After dropping off the material at his shop, he was about to slip away to his favorite bar when his wife came and swiped his cash, proclaiming she needed her nicotine fix. So the shoemaker cut the material to begin work in the morning, then searched the whole building for anything alcoholic. After finding an old bottle of Jose Cuervo, the old shoemaker went to bed. The next morning, he went back to, into his shop. The old shoemaker found four size 10 nighties. They were made just as perfectly as the heels, so the shoemaker charged $800 for the lot of them. With the $800 from the night ease, the shoemaker bought enough leather for four pairs of loafers. The next morning, eight little shoes sat there upon his desk. And so it came to pass that each night the shoemaker would leave the material out for shoes, and each morning there the complete shoes would be, until finally the man had enough money to fund his heavy drinking habits and his wife's attempt to get lung cancer. Then, one night very close to Independence Day, the shoemaker decided to see who the hell was making all these perfect shoes for him. Once the sun had set, the shoemaker grabbed a bottle of scotch off his shelf and hid behind a fort he had constructed from his wife's empty cigarette boxes. He had almost finished off his scotch and fallen asleep when he heard the door being smashed open. Two elves, er, I mean two little people, sauntered in and went to work making shoes. They finished their work quickly and searched the surrounding areas for valuables and ran off. The next morning the shoemaker made a few calls and then got more pieces of shoe material ready. That night the little people came back and started to do their work. Then after grabbing a watch and two wedding rings, they ran for the door and bumped headlong into two burly men in leather jackets. Out of the cigarette fort, the shoemaker leapt, trapping the little people. After a long discussion about a lawsuit against them for breaking and entering, the little people decided to take an offer the shoemaker gave them. The very next day, the shoemaker opened his new shoe sweatshop with two little workers. A week later, the shoemaker's wife finally died. Not by the cigarettes, but by the fact that she thought making toast in the bathtub was a good idea. Or at least that's how the jury ruled it. The by then very wealthy and single shoemaker remarried a woman half his age and moved to Florida. He was later found stabbed to death in a penthouse suite, lying in a pool of blood and tequila. His second wife was never caught, but was reported being seen in Vegas with one of the little persons. The other little person was never seen again. <laughs>